Hey everyone, it's Thursday the 20th of June and it's 2 o'clock in the afternoon. Right, for today's video I have got a couple of barricade lamps here that arrived earlier in the week. Um, I've also got a few charity shop finds, including a nice camera tripod actually, which we will have a look at as well. I've got a bunch of automotive LED lights here, which I bought for a purpose. They're going to go on the leeway because I always want to do a little bit of customization on at least one of my mopeds and that's not going to happen on the jog so <laughs> I'll go on the leeway I've also got a Lego Speed Champion set here that I wanted to uh, show you now I normally keep the Lego stuff for the Lego channel but I really like this set and I really want to talk about it so um, we'll do that later in the video plus I want to talk a little bit about um, my diabetes and my eye health because I've had a, um, had a, I've been to a Specsavers appointment um, this lunchtime, so we'll talk about that as well. Right, sorry, I've got a scratch. I've got, scr I've got an itch. Not scratching itch is what I was trying to say. So, let's start with the barricade lamps, and then I'll talk about what uh, went on at Specsavers. So. These two lamps I got from um, a friend of mine over on Facebook. He's also a lamp collector. And then you found a couple more that he wanted to get shot off. So here's the first one. A Nissan Nitra. I believe I've got the yellow body version of this up in the cupboard. Um, and this one I've actually got a battery in it. It works. Um, you know, I didn't have one with a red body. I think a lot of my lamps actually, you know, are the traditional yellow. So I do like to try and obtain ones with different colour bodies. Uh, I mean, it's not in bad shape either. It's got a few scuffs on it, you know, from use and storage and whatnot. And the other one I got from him was this um, Permic. I think they called it call it the Permic Universal. Um, I remember seeing these quite a lot back in the 1990s when I was a little boy. I mean, they did the job. I wouldn't say they're the greatest lamp out there, but they're actually sturdy lamps. No, I can't fault them for that. However, I do have a few of these in the collection already, including a couple of earlier versions. The earlier versions didn't have brass metal strips for battery contacts. They had wire. They were really cheap I guess. <laughs> um, I've also got the uh, skip bracket so you can mount one of these on a skip on the side of the road. Um, but I wanted this one because one it's got a metal bolt down there not the plastic one which I absolutely hate and it's got the handle it's got the plastic handle um, which none of mine actually have. Some of them have got the little bits that stick out there so you can put a handle on like this one has you just pop it on but it hasn't they don't have the actual handle in fact I think a couple of mine have actually got a bit of wire tied to them so I can hang them up in the cupboard to save on shelf space yeah so I'm happy with those um, right what's next on the list spec savers so I've been noticing for the last couple of months or so that, especially in this right eye, um, you can see like a couple of little dots in the bottom left here, my left. Um, and I knew exactly what it was. I knew it was diabetic retinopathy, um, which is crystals that form in the eye. And when I blink, it depends what I'm looking at. And I only see it when I blink, otherwise I don't see nothing, my sight is perfectly normal. Um, but it does depend what I'm looking at. A nice bright like white surface, I'll notice them. Looking out the window there at the green tree with all the shadows and everything, can't see it. Um, so it's not really affecting my sight, but it is annoying. <laughs> um, I don't know if anyone else has ever had them that watch my channel, but you know, when you get like a little floater in your eye and you blink, and you can just see it every time you blink. It's a bit like that, but it's there permanently, not temporarily. Um, 
Now it wasn't bad because that OCT scan at Smixavers cost me just £10. Yeah, the NHS doesn't cover that. Which I think is daft because if I actually went to um, like what's the nearest hospital that does it, Chroma Hospital, they will do the scan through the NHS. But yeah, if I went to Specsavers, they don't do it, but I'm not fussed, it's only £10. I thought it was actually going to be more than that. But, uh, yeah, I'm going to quibble. Um, so yeah, that scan did show I have got some diabetic retinopathy in this eye. Not so much in this one, there's a tiny little bit in the left. But I swear I could see just as many dots in that. But obviously not, it's just because my eyes, well that is a weak eye anyway. Very lazy left arm. I was born with it, you know, astigmatism is what they call it. Uh, I mean, I'd still see out of it, but I couldn't identify anything unless it was right there. <laughs> I mean, I can see my hand. I don't see my fingers doing that. But if I like took that like six foot away, I wouldn't be able to identify. Or I actually think I'd be lucky to even see it's a hand. I mean, even getting there. No, even there, I can't identify what it is. I mean, you know what it is because it's attached to me. Yeah, so that eye, no good. So I'd have preferred what's going on in this eye to happen in that eye. Then it wouldn't have bothered me. <laughs> you know, I probably wouldn't have noticed it. Um, so, I went through all the eye tests as well. I've been. Um, well, I've got to pick up on the 1st of July two pairs of glasses, one for reading. Because that's my biggest struggle, really, reading. And one for distance. Distance, not so bad. Um, but yeah, reading can be a struggle. Um, especially certain fonts. And certain letters, because when I was looking at the little, you know, the board, it's all bloody computerised now, it's actually in a mirror. That you or on a screen, I should say, in front of you, rather than the older, you know, printed board that they used to have. Um, that shows my age a bit there, doesn't it? <laughs> you know, they had the mechanical glasses that they put on your face, and then they manually change all the les lenses and lens combinations and things. <laughs> Not anymore. It's all a machine, and they just, you know, she just operates it with a computer. It's actually quite smart. Anyway. Yeah, um, some of the letters, like on some of the smaller print, some of them I could see and others I struggled with. Like, telling the difference between C and O, because they both look the same in my vision. You know, I couldn't see the little gap in the C to differentiate that that's the letter C. It looked the same as an O. Um, so yeah, I do struggle with some letters. N and M is another one. which is annoying because, you know, reading is a key part of life. You, you need to be able to read. Um, but that's actually one of the reasons I've never liked reading because I've always struggled with reading. Always. Even when I was in high school, I always hated reading. I'm a slow reader. My mum, she loves books. And even these days, you know, she's got Kindle, so she's got, I don't know how many, you know, um, books on her Kindle, digital books. Um... But by the time I've got like down a few lines of what she's been reading, she's read it and flipped. <laughs> she is such a quick reader, even though she's uh, blah, 60. Oh, that is bad. She hasn't long had a birthday and I can't remember how old she is. 60 something. 66, I think. Should I say 56 just to be nice? <laughs> Yeah, um, so what the optician wants me to do now is contact the, um, I can't remember what they actually call it, but the eye place, you know, at Crowber Hospital or the NNN, wherever the main office is, and book in to get these uh, checked by them to see if I need anything else done, because you can have laser treatment, you know what they do, they 
point a laser in your eye and basically break up all the crystals, burn them away. Um, but I believe they can only do that so many times because of the risk of scar tissue, which can also affect your vision. So if it isn't too bad, I might leave it as long as possible. You know, and have it done later when it really needs to be done. Something like that. I don't know. Just have to, I'll have to book the appointment and just see what the experts say. I'm not an eye expert. I just use them. <laughs> I suppose it makes me an expert, doesn't it? You know, you know your own eyeballs. Um, yeah, so two pairs of glasses to pick up. Which weren't that expensive either. I found two for 30 quid. Because uh, I get my lenses prescribed um, for free, rather. Because uh, I'm on PIP and whatnot, so. And ESA, which is Employment and Support Allowance. Um, Mine's gone blank now. I hate when that does that. Right then. I don't think there's much else I can say about that anyway. So, oh, I'm glad I looked down because Smudgy's right beside me. I don't want to put my feet on him. So, when I went out to get my breakfast this morning, which was some lovely sausage rolls from um, Christopher's, lovely little bakery around the corner, um, I stopped in at a couple of uh, charity shops. Um, the brake charity shop was one. I've got this Lego Technic buggy. I'm not sure if that's a set, but we've got a Lego Farfire stuck on here as well. Didn't realise he was actually a Farfire until now. Well, that's the uh, 1980s Lego Farfire uniform, which I actually used for quite some time. I don't know how many renditions of the police uniform they've gotten through over the years. They do change it every once in a while. And a nice big bag of red Lego bricks as well. Um, but there is some useful bits in here as well. That's why I got it. And it was only £10, so. Got like some slopes for roofs and some big plates and things in there. Then I went to the community shop because on my way back, it's actually just on the corner over here, about 50 yards up the road. And I've got another nice tripod, look at this. For just five pounds. You can actually get rid of that now, can't we? You see, on my other one, my SLK one I had, this one's not LSLK, all of this bit broke. Side to side adjustment as well. Like, ooh. Yeah, I haven't really looked at this. I just saw it, liked it, thought I'll buy that. Oh, hang on. Ooh. Now my SLK one had this feature as well, but that the winder broke, so I just used to yank it up. <laughs> ah, there's the screw to tighten that. And of course, all the legs straighten out as well. So eventually I will swap the camera over to this one because this is a much more sturdier tripod. Although I haven't said that. I don't want it to fall over and get broken again. That's the only reason the other one broke. It just fell over so many times. I don't need that tilt. I don't think. So I'm just tying that up for now. Fold my crank handle down so I don't snap it like I did on the other one. I think that snapped because it fell over as well. But this National Ge Geographic one I've got, which I got from cheap from Argos, um, is ideal for, you know, popping in a backpack or something because it's nice and light. It's a lot lighter than the other one. And I thought these were headphones, but I'm going to give these a go on my gaming channel. Oh, these are actually Acer. 
Mm, they might be somewhat half decent then. Um, just to see if that mic is going to make me sound any better than the one I've got here. I don't know if it's actually going to work because it's a full connection plug and I don't think the PC actually has one of them. They feel comfortable at least. Right, well, that's the charity shop stuff. Um, well, actually, before we continue, we update on the boot radio at least. The Bush one's fully working. I've serviced the volume control on it with a bit of contact spray, which I've got here. Um, although, when I put it back together, the tape deck kept clicking on it. I had to back two of the screws out just a little bit so they weren't fully down tight on it to stop it clicking. But other than that, it's working perfectly fine. This one needed another antenna, which I've actually added. So it's all broken here. Um, the issue is, I can't lay that flat because it doesn't protrude enough out of the casing here. It's a little bit on the short side. I mean, not a ma major issue, really. You know, if you could live with it sticking up like that, that's perfectly fine. I mean, I could. But I know what I'm like. I'm going to catch it and then I'm going to bend it and break it again. So what I was thinking of doing is trying to find a little metal plate or something that I could make like a little extender with. Just so I can bring this bit up. It's got to be metal because obviously the uh, antenna wire's got to connect. Well, mind you, I could connect that through a nut and bolt a bit further up where it connects to the antenna itself. But yeah, other than that, it's working great. They were definitely worth the one pound each. Really need a quick start guide for a set of headphones? Is modern society that dumb? You plug them in, you put them on. What more do you need to know? Or am I just being too black and white there? Please tell, if I'm being too black and white, just tell me. <laughs> Right, so, in just over a week's time, it's um, what we call the North Welsh and Fun Day, which actually stretches over, I think, three days now, um, because, well, it started off as one day a week, like, ten years ago, I think that's when this started. Um, it's just sort of expanded over time, but the name has just stuck. Anyway, on Saturday the 29th, I will be taking that leeway over to the Memorial Park, our War Memorial Park, where the events are held and whatnot, um, for a bike show, because why not? I've already spoken to the guy that's uh, organising it, um, you know, with help from the Fun Day Committee and whatnot. Um, and pretty much you can take anything. It's just a motorbike show. So you can take mopeds, scooters, trikes, big bikes, little bikes, old bikes, new bikes, whatever. So I just thought for a bit of fun, and that leeway is quite unusual, I'm going to take that. I've always wanted to do a little bit of uh, customising on one of my mopeds so I thought it's going to be that one now because I'm selling the jog so I went on Amazon and bought a few bits and bobs and I don't know if I'm going to use all of these I don't know how I'm going to go about wiring these up yet you know, I'm going to put my separate switch I'm going to wire some of these to the existing headlight and tail light I haven't decided yet so for the rear which might give me a little bit of extra visibility as well. Got a set of four of these, and I may not put all four on. I think all four might actually be overkill, so I might just sell for two of these, 
on the back of the top box. Um, now ideally I'd like to wire them to the tail light so that they were on all the time, although I don't need them on all the time. Which is why I can't decide if I want to put them on a separate switch or not. And then just because I got the same style but in amber, and another four of those. And I've got these but I'm I doubt I'm going to use these. But they were cheap and I actually like the style of them, so I might find something to do with them in the future. Who knows? If not, I'll just don't know. <laughs> might be stuck with them. Um, and then, and these will actually be connected to the headlight. A couple of day running LEDs. I've seen several motorbikes that put the extra day running LEDs on the bike and they look bloody good actually so I thought you know why not do something like with these. I mean these are actually designed for a car bumper you know so that's why they're flexible. Um, so on the front of the leeway I was going to put them on the pod, the storage pod at the front. Um, but that way I can only stick one on the front. <laughs> it's not a very big pod. There just isn't the room unless I go round the corner then I'd have white ones sticking out the side which I don't think is a good idea. Um, so I could either just use the one on the front and then have a spare one or I could use both and stack them like that or even put a gap between them and have them like that. That might get me noticed actually, you know make them more noticeable if I did that. Or I could stick them like that, one on either side. I don't know. I'll have to go down there, you know, and just mock them up and see which way I prefer to put them. You know, then all I'd have to do is just connect these wires together and then connect them in with the headlight. Sounds simple, but getting those plastic panels off, not so simple. Um, it actually looks a lot more complicated than my little jog. But then again, I've never taken this leeway apart anyway, so... And how many times have I taken the jog apart? More times than I probably should have, but, you know, I know the jog like the back of my hand now. <laughs> I could probably do that with my eyes closed. Right. Um, I did get some switches as well, because these are cheap, even on Amazon. No, just cheap little rocker switches. Got a pack of five. Because either did them with not enough in the pack or too many, so. <laughs> um, but I don't know what so I was going to put a beacon up on the top box. But. Apparently. You can't do that on private vehicles. You can only do it on vehicles. You know, that need them. Such as recovery trucks. Um, roadwork vehicles and construction vehicles, escort vehicles. So if I was actually using the moped for escorts, I could. Um, so do I really want to risk it? Well, with all the checkers on it, that does look a bit like an escort vehicle or something. <laughs> I suppose I could just whack it on just for the parade and then take it off later, couldn't I? Because uh, once we're done at the show, we're going to head over to where the carnival parade will meet up and lead the um, parade. We'll be riding up front. Well, those that want to. I mean, not you don't have to if you don't want to. <clears throat> but I do, just for the fun. Why not? Oh, the other thing I bought, which I needed some of these anyway, because some of my lights have fallen down from around the edge of the room. Just some sticky back self-adhesive clips here, cable clips. Because in the top box, I'm going to need something to uh, just keep the wires tidy so I can still use it. You know, I don't want wires dangling everywhere. Um, 
But what I would actually like to do for the extra rear LEDs and the beacon if I go ahead with that, I was going to run a cable from the battery up into the top box. So it actually takes power from the ped. Um, the other option I've got is to use one of the 12 volt big ass batteries that I've got down here. These big 12 amp hour lead acid ones. Now I got these from an e-bike battery. Um, I can't remember if it was last, late last year or early, early this year. I bought an e-bike. One of them power bike branded ones. I don't know why. I should have known that it would be a cheap, tacky, horrible, flimsy piece of poo, because I've had them in the past. The plastics are just so blinking brittle. They're horrible. <laughs> um, but it worked. Um, and my plan was, because I got another e-bike off the same person, I got it in a job lot, but the electrics were knackered. Well, at least the battery <coughs> indicator module on the handlebar was um, some either someone or it just disintegrated with whether all the protective membrane was just missing, so all the buttons on it and LEDs are just rusted. Everything else probably works. Um, and actually did look good, it was just that module. And it had no battery, but my plan was to like try and use the good stuff from the working e-bike and put it on the folding one. But I actually took that one apart as well because I thought, yeah, I could use these parts on an even better bike or something like that. Convert one of my older shopper bikes into an e-bike because they're 20 inch wheels. So I can't use them on a mountain bike and they're rear, -wheeled, um, rear wheels as well. I mean, I did try selling that folding e-bike with the extra bits from the other one as I was giving up on the project, but nobody wanted it, nobody took it. I put it up there well below its price. Um, but yeah, anyway, decided to take the battery pack apart, and I knew while I was taking the screws out that someone had been in that battery pack before, because there were screws missing, quite a few missing, actually. And then when I got in there, um, a bit of earth wire had been spliced in in one spot. Um, and then I could see from some of the other wires that, you know, it had been tampered with, which told me, these have been changed in it. So I know these weren't the original ones with that e-bike. If you wonder why I actually scrapped it, even though it worked, it's because when I rode it, the handlebars sort of being nice and stiff and solid like on an ordinary mountain bike or hybrid bike or road bike, anything like that, they went like this. There's so much flex in those handlebars I thought I was going to snap them. And I thought, I don't like it, I don't like riding it, I don't want to sell it to anyone like that either. It's a piece of poo, so I just thought I'd take it apart for bits and scrap the frame. Um, I did that a couple of months ago. And then just decided I'd give up on it all to Together. Maybe um, my friend Cat will uh, be interested in it. As like I said, I'm, I'm just giving up. But I don't know because those wheels are small, so I don't know if they'd be any use to her. I think she prefers front wheels to rear wheels when it comes to the mower. Oh, I've got the batteries. My wall's going to stick. It's basically a long way of saying I was going to stick that battery in the top box and use that. <laughs> uh, so yeah, I'm looking forward to that. I will, of course, when I ride in the parade, I will put this on the front of the bed. And that will get uploaded as a video. And I'm going to take cameras and things over to the park. Uh, so we can have a look at things over there. They do a classic car display over there as well, so I want to go and have a look at that. I think that's on the Sunday. No, and again, I'll take the cameras and things over. Right. 
I keep thinking that I'm forgetting something, that there was something else I wanted to talk about specifically, but pretty certain I've covered that with the, the moped stuff. Um, now, Lego Speed Champions. <clears throat> when my voice comes back. <laughs> so, you know, I'm well into my Lego, I have been for years. Well, I don't think I ever stopped being interest, interested in Lego. You know, as a kid, it was one of my favourite toys. In fact, my two favourite toys was Lego and toy cars. Very rarely, I mean, I did have other toys that I played with, but they were my two favourites. Absolutely loved them, and to this day, I still love them. I mean, I don't play with die-cast toys anymore. They get displayed. I'm either going to deny or admit that I don't play with the Lego when I've got a Lego City, but you know, just I'll leave that open. <laughs> anyway, one of my favourite themes is the Lego Speed Champions theme. Um, so I really do enjoy building the cars. Some of them are a bit frustrating because um, there's a lot of them that just have like a hundred freaking stickers to go on them and I hate doing those or they have weak points and some of them have multiple weak points which just make them annoying to build but for the most part it's a great thing I absolutely love it I love displaying all the cars um, a lot of mine need to dust down again a lot of them I can't get to at the minute because they're in the display cabinet which is now in the bedroom um, they do a good selection of different cars as well. I mean, we've got an Audi, an electric Audi over there. Muscle cars, they did a couple of Ford Mustangs. Um, and we've got JDM cars, I've got a Toyota down the bottom there. I've got Brian's Nissan Skyline from the Fast and the Furious. I've actually got Dom's Dodge Charger beside it. And I know my little brother, he's got both of those as well, because he loves the Fast and the Furious franchise. Um, and I remember showing him the Skyline last year, and he was just like, I want it. <laughs> he's not really into his Lego, but he wanted it. <laughs> um, and then there's like supercars and, you know, the really expensive sports cars like Lamborghini, Ferrari, um, Pagani and whatnot. Jaguar, Mercedes, I've got an F1 car, but anyway, the recent purchases was this one, a little Lamborghini, didn't even know this was a car that existed, but apparently it does because they put a photo of the real car on their boxes alongside photos of the model, you know, um, in fact I can tell you what this one is because I've just seen the box. It is it's a Lamborghini Lambo V12 Vision Gran Turismo. A Lamborghini Lambo. So for those that might be interested, there's the picture of the real car. So there's a car that does exist. <laughs> um I'm not going to say I dislike this car, but I don't like it either. I'm neutral on it. Um, but when it came to building it, it was a pain in the ass, and it still is a pain in the ass because these exhausts keep falling off and falling to bits. This bit keeps falling off because that's quite weak. So you can it pops off so easily. It's literally just them two studs that hold it on. Um, this front nose bit here can be a bit weak. So I don't like picking it up that often. <laughs> I don't like moving it around. It's an unusual looking car though. It looks very futuristic. You know, I'd expect to see something like that but in a, a sci-fi movie or something like that, you know. Like cars of the 2050s. <laughs> Um, anyway, the other set I bought 
is a two car set and it's a Mercedes set. So we've got the SL63, I don't know what the 63 stands for but that's an SL63. I can't actually show you the box for this one because I've already taken it down to the bin. And the G63, basically a modern G-Wagon. I bought this set because I actually want this. I really like the look of this. And these are AMG, by the way, They're tuned by AMG. And believe it or not, this one actually took the longest to build out of both of them. Because I actually had more parts. You know, when you buy a Lego set nowadays, um, the parts are split into bags, numbered bags. So when you open your instruction manual, you know, it will show you to empty out bag numbered one and so on. You know, you'd go through them in numerical order. Um, so this one out of the set had bags one and two. This is the first one you'd build. I suppose you could start with the other one if you wanted to. But I always start in order, so I built this one first, bags one and two. I don't know how many parts are in a bag, I don't know how many parts are in the car. But this one, this one had like four, five to build this thing. There's, seriously, there's a lot more parts went into this than it actually looks. You'd look at a lot of these Speed Champions cars and they really don't look like there's that much to them considering the price they cost. I mean, this two car set was 45 quid. And a single car is around sort of 20 quid, I believe. Because, you know, they've got royalties to pay to the car companies and whatnot. Which obviously boosts the price up. That is why things like their own themes, like Lego City and Lego Technic and... Well, not really Lego Technic, unless you get the stinky little sets. Uh, Lego Friends, you know, they cost less than what themed sets like this cost. You know, like Speed Champions or the uh, uh, Lego Disney. You know, the Disney sets they do, or Star Wars. And of course, they've got royalties and whatnot to pay, which means I've got to jack the price up. I'm actually pretty certain that is actually a set, an old uh, Lego Technic set. I am going to, uh, I'm going to Google it. I can't remember what the set is called, but I'm sure if I type in Lego, vintage Lego Technic buggy or something, it's going to come up with this one. Oh, it'd be a 1980s set. I'm pretty certain of that. Right, and I'm pretty certain that's uh, everything covered. So, I will end the video here. So, as always, thanks a lot for watching. And as I said earlier, you know, please like the video if you like it. If you didn't, give it a dislike. And uh, consider subscribing as it's totally free. Um, and it helps you, you know, follow me and keep up to date with the videos and whatnot. And in the video description, I will put links to my other two YouTube channels, my Discord server and my Twitch channel. So feel free to check all of those out as well. And consider subscribing and following and joining and whatnot. And uh, I'll see you in the next video. Bye.